One, it's costly. Two, it's momentary. And three, and three, it's the third and, one. And, oops. <laughs> well, I shall remember it by, by, by the next debate, I'll assure you. But nonetheless, there'll be no more coal burnt in this office today unless it's worth is deducted from both your salaries. Now get back to work. Get back to uh, and besides, I like the coal. <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> Except for buying things for which you have no money. It's a time when you find yourself one year older and not one hour richer. And besides, of you, what do you have to be so merry about? You are poor enough. What do you have to be so dismal about? You are rich enough. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, if I could work five years every idiot, that would walk around with Merry Christmas on his lips and be boiled in his own pudding and buried you with a stick of holly. Right through his heart. Oh, give me that. Huh? Huh? You don't even know what he is. Oh, you got the square jaw all over there. Don't be cross, Uncle. How can I help but be cross when I have to deal with fools like you? You need to carry the weapon. It really makes a difference. Nephew, do me a favor. You keep Christmas your way and just. I shall keep it in mind. Keep it. But you don't keep it. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> then let me eat it at all then. For all the good it's ever done for you. There are good many things from which I have derived good, from which I have not profited. I count Christmas among those. I've always regarded Christmas as a charitable time. A time where both men and women can open their shut up hearts and regard each other as more than merely fellow passengers to the grave. <laughs> and though it has not put a scrap of gold in my pocket, I know it has done me good. Therefore, I say, God bless it. No, no, no that was good. Oh, And one more up us now to do comedy of fools, and you will keep your Christmases by losing your situation. <laughs> Well, nephew, you seem to be quite the powerful speaker. Perhaps you belong in the parliament. Don't be angry with me, uncle. Come, dine with us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> dine with you? Dine with you. Tell me, nephew, why did you marry against my wishes? Because I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> fell in love with a poor girl who brought absolutely nothing to your marriage. But love. I love her, and she loves me. Well, we have a lovely daughter together whom who you have yet to meet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, oh, really, Fred? And, and how old is she? Kind of you, Uncle. She's five years old. Beautiful like her mother. Huge dimples and uh, curly hair. Oh, yes, nephew. I want nothing from you, and I ask nothing of you. Can't we be friends? You said, good day, nephew. I'm distressed to find you so resolute. We've never had a quarrel. My mother cared a great deal for you, and that's why I. It was not Fred's intention to offend his uncle. Well. I'll keep my good humor to myself and uh, wish you a, what is that, a shilling on the ground dance? Oh, well, well, oh, 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 o